Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night or whatever time you've tuned into Heads Up for the Weekend. Heads Up for the Weekend is where I, as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church, let you know what's going on this weekend at Bethlehem. But before I get into that, I want to take this opportunity, as always, to do a little mining or a little fishing, mining and fishing for those who are in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and you do not have a church home. Uh, you may have just gotten saved. Uh, you may have just moved to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, and been praying for a church home. You know, we've been praying that God would add disciples to our church here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And who knows whether at the sound of my voice, you're listening to uh, the will of God and the direction of God by the power of his Holy Spirit that would lead you to join us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. It's a one-hour service. So I want you to take this as a personal invitation to see me on this coming Sunday. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar. And we'd love to see your face in the place. Before you visit us, why don't you go ahead and visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there you can get to know us. And after that, click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, and follow us or friend us in what I call Cyber Church and become a part of our Cyber Church family before you join us in the service this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service again. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. And again, our website is www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And again, you're listening to Heads Up for the Weekend. And Heads Up for the Weekend is where I let you know what's going on here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church this coming weekend. And we're putting a spotlight on prayer and fasting because we'll be praying and fasting this coming when, uh, Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Hashtag Fasting Friday. And we invite you to join us, whether you're a member or a disciple at Bethlehem or not. Uh, we need, uh, because of our times, uh, we need your prayers. And we extend this invitation for anyone at the sound of my voice, who are led by the Spirit of God to pray for what's going on in our culture and in our society, in our world today. Uh, join us again tomorrow. And tomorrow is Friday. Um, the 25th, Friday the 25th, and uh, again, we would love for you to join us fasting and praying. Here are some things we're fasting and praying about. Uh, we initially started our fasting and praying uh, in regards to our COVID uh, times, and COVID has uh, tarried, uh, but all along Bethlehem and St. Scott, we've been praying that God would rebuke, and you do this same formula for you and your church that God would rebuke COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, and COVID-19 variances from your church, our church is Bethlehem Baptist Church, from your city. Our city is Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. From the counties that make up the great state of Oklahoma, where we are, you fast and pray for the counties that make up the great state where you are, and we come together in the end and fast and pray for our country. Uh, so this is what we'll be praying about uh, tomorrow. And also tomorrow, as we fast and pray, we're going to continue to fast and pray uh, that God would deliver this nation from the aggressions of Ukraine and from this madman's war. And as we see, there are some amazing things that are happening, even though there's a, a tremendous amount of destruction uh, it was reported yesterday that uh, the Russian troops uh, have basically retreated. They were 15 miles from Kiev, and now they're 30 miles. So they seem to be retreating. And I believe Bethlehem and saints of God, I believe it's because the saints all over the world have been fasting and praying for this nation 
and uh, for this unjust war. And we need to continue to fast and pray until this war is over. In Jesus' name, continue to fast and pray that God will rebuke, uh, continue to rebuke uh, the Russian army in Jesus' name. So it is uh, a miraculous miracle because Russia is thought to be the third most powerful nation in the country, I mean, in the world. And uh, we just need to pray that God will continue to rebuke and that God wouldn't allow them to escalate this war into chemical warfare or nuclear warfare in Jesus name. But we need to continue to pray and we need to get uh, encouragement and seeing the power of our prayers, Bethlehem and church. This is an amazing thing that is happening, even though there's much destruction. We, we need to pray that God would restore the the years are really, in this case, the weeks that the locusts have eaten and how it has uh, destroyed the nation, really. Uh, we last heard there are about 6 million displaced people in the country and 3 million that has left the country. So we still have a long way to go, but we see how God is working and pray that God will give them the complete victory and end this unjust war. Also, some great news in regards to, as we were fasting and praying and putting the spotlight on fasting and praying, we were praying for Brittany Garner, and the great news yesterday, uh, Russia has finally let officials see her, and they say that she's doing uh, good, seems to be doing really well, but this in and of itself is a miracle because she has been in, in uh, jail or prison for, I believe it's about uh, a month or so. And they wouldn't let anybody see. They didn't even report that they had gotten her at first. So I think this is a great move where God is about to deliver and we need to continue to pray uh, because our God moves the nations. I'm telling you, we have an awesome and powerful God. And in Bethlehem, we ever believed in the God that we serve. No telling what could happen right here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, if we really pray fervently as a church. And we put that spotlight also on two other men that were uh, being detained. They've already been convicted. I believe uh, Travis Reed has been convicted for about nine years. And uh, uh, Brother Paul here, uh, Waylon, uh, has been convicted. I think he's in double figures of, of being convicted, has been there for three years. And as I said, these people knew or no, some people are in high places or their relatives and friends have gotten them uh, before people in high places. But uh, sometimes in this life, even people in high places can't help you. And this is my exclaim. Hey, let's call on the power of God in situations like these when man cannot help. God is able. And I was telling you that all three of them are in impossible situations. But the angel asked Mary, is there anything impossible for God? And I believe that there's nothing impossible for God. And we need to continue to fast and pray for the release of these. Uh, I'm calling them political. Uh, or they're using them as political pawns. And I'm calling them political uh, prisoners. But we're fasting and praying for that. And also Bethlehem, we hear that's kind of hit close to home as we're fasting and praying for what happened in Tishomingo. Tishomingo is about an hour and 30 minutes from Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And this was reported all over the nation yesterday, the New York Times, CNN, about these six uh, high school young ladies that were killed in an accident there in Tisha Mingo. I mean, this is so, so heartbreaking. And uh, we want to stand with the Tisha Mingo community and fast and pray. Six high school age uh, children, I believe it was two 17 year, year olds and um, two 15 years old. And the 16 year old was driving this car. It's a little, um, what did they say it was? It's a Chevy Spark. Uh, 
And um, I remember coming from Las Vegas and telling uh, the church that I was riding in a little car. And this was the, the little car that I was riding in. It has very good safety. It's the best safety uh, 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 safety passings that, that a car can get. And man, this is just so heartbreaking. And you can see that pink uh, steering wheel there. And uh, just, just we need to fast and pray for the families there. And fast and praying for even the, the driver. They released his name today. I'm not going to say his name, but can you imagine being in that? Oh, it's just horrible. And we need to pray, pray, church, uh, for the families there in Tisha Mingo, that whole community. Uh, fast and pray, church, um, that God would comfort as only he can in Jesus' name. And lastly, we'll fast and pray also for uh, what happened in New Orleans, uh, the, the, the uh, tornadoes in New Orleans and, and this destruction that happened. And one man said, and, and four Hail Marys, his life, everything was taken away. His life happened. And just like that, that's what we're talking about in our series. Uh, and just like that, a tornado struck. And just like that, uh, there was a car accident, and just like that, Russia invade, invaded Ukraine. So uh, we're fasting and praying for those in just like that moments, and believe God can provide comfort and care for such a time as this in Jesus' name. Lastly, we ask you, Bethlehem, saints of God, to fast and pray your burden. Fast and pray your purpose. If you know what God has purposed you to do, if you don't, you need to fast and pray for what he has purposed you to do. And I've been asking you to fast and pray during this time uh, for my new book that's going to be released uh, next week that's coming out and it's How to Overcome the Psalms of Loneliness. And this is a, book, a study, a look at loneliness through the book of Psalms is really dealing with loneliness and depression uh, in the book of Psalms and it's to come out next week. So please fast and pray that God will be able to use this uh, in the body of Christ in Jesus name. And also I, I shared uh, yesterday of another book project that we're trying to get out in April entitled Mapping Out Matthew. And this is a a survey of the book, the, the New Testament book of Matthew. And we're trying to uh, get that done for next month and pray that God would use it to impact the body of Jesus Christ and all of my writings. And you can get uh, all of my books at all of them are still in print at uh, amazon.com backslash uh, uh, Arthur backslash Reverend Dr. Michael Eaton. I'll try to remember, put it on the screen here. And uh, all of my books, I do believe, uh, uh, written by the power of the Holy Spirit and can be an encouragement to you. So go up there. And uh, I think it says that I have 33 projects up there. I don't know if it's 33 books, but they kind of count uh, Kindle and all that. Kindle, hardback, paperback, uh, 33 projects up there that you could go and you can look and, and fast and pray that God would use it to encourage the body of Christ for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, there's a book up there I released uh, two years ago entitled Hang In There. And boy, is this a time that we need to hang in. So fast and pray for your burdens. And we want to fast and pray with you for your purpose in this life that God would use you in a mighty and in an awesome way for such a time as this in Jesus' name. Also, Bethlehem, you know, we continue to encourage you to be involved in Sunday school. Sunday school is our main arm of uh, discipleship. And I always kind of like to tell you what's coming up in Sunday school. So I'm going to tell you now uh, what's going on in Sunday school. We're going to be, and we're still studying under the heading of living life connected 
to Christ. Our fourth uh, lesson under that heading is this weekend, we're going to discover or study a life of love, a life of love. And uh, the passage that we'll be studying is John 15, 9 through 17, John 15, 9 through 17. And the lesson is on page 48 of your Sunday school book. And you know, a little later, Bethlehem, I'll send out my, our Zoom Sunday school codes where you can have it and save it so you don't have to look for it this Sunday. If the pastor forgets to send it out this Sunday, you'll have it saved and be ready to be there and study up first. Do what we taught you to do in loyalty month. Make your observations make your own interpretations and, and make your own application. When you come to Sunday school, you'll be ready. You'll be ready to bring something to Sunday school and just ready just to get something. So uh, we want to challenge you to uh, do that. And again, the codes I, I'm going to send out. And also you can send those out to your relatives and friends today so they won't have to be running and looking around for it on Sunday and we encourage you to continue to share these codes, Zoom codes, uh, and we can reach as many people as God will allow us to meet for such a time as this. So Sunday School at 10, and uh, we are Facebook living Sunday School now at 10 o'clock on Sunday. So if you're interested in Sunday School, you can uh, follow or get up on our Facebook page, and I'll try to put the Facebook down here on the screen, but it's uh, Facebook backslash, I believe, Pastor Michael Eton. So uh, join us on Facebook and Bethlehem, we know you join us in Zoom. Heads up for the weekend. I'm giving you heads up for the weekend for fasting, heads up for the weekend for Sunday school. And now we're going to give you the heads up for the weekend for what we're going to share on this coming Sunday. We're still in a series entitled, and just like that, as I mentioned during prayer time, that sometimes in this life, there's some stuff that will happen. 2 Corinthians 1.8 said, and we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of the hardships that we encountered. Um, and he goes on to say, we were under a burden that was beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired even life itself. And sometimes in this life, these in just like that moments will hit and we don't want you to be unaware. You know, God has tried to teach us how to live in this world. And he, he told us as we look at the end, just like that. Russia invades uh, Ukraine. God says in the last day, nation will rise up against nation. We don't want you to be unaware, brother. Um, when the in just like that moments of a car accident that kills uh, six young children. Oh, sometimes those moments hit. And how do you make it through? Uh, and in just like that war, in just like that uh, death, how do you make it through? And all I can say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be. And I'm pretty sure many of you would know where you would be when you've had to deal with those in just like that moments. I mean, it's all kinds of situations of in just like that moments, just like with the tornado and just like that, the tornado strike. Now, only one person died, which is sad. But as I've said during this series, sometimes the hardest things to deal with is not having lost your life. I mean, as a Christian, we go to heaven. Sometimes the hardest thing to deal with is to live in this life. Can you imagine having to start over? You lost everything. One man said in four hell marries, he lost everything. And just like that. So how do you handle? Um, and we've been trying to prepare you for those in just like that moments. 
And uh, we're going to be uh, in the last, really, part of our series. Um, we, we, we dealt with uh, everything from Moses, and now we're at Jesus this coming Sunday on the cross. And, uh, and just like that, guess what? Jesus banned, I call it the banned death. That was an unexpected death for the disciples. You know, I mean, they were with Jesus and, and, and though he was uh, trying to prepare him for that in just like that moment, uh, the disciples uh, weren't able to understand. And, and, and we're going to I'll share this in Bethlehem. You know, I like to share just this brief devotional thought as a time of encouragement on Thursday for some people that won't be able to make it to Sunday. Some people need some hope for right now, as opposed to Sunday. I you thinking I just need some help right now, some hope right now. And we're going to look at this and just like that, Jesus bane death, his death. Um, and let me read the text. We're going to look at Matthew 27 and we're going to read uh, from 45 to 46, from 50 to 54. And it reads as following, church and saints of God, Bethlehem and saints of God. It says, from noon until uh, three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. Uh, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I, I'm going to stop right there. Just read today, 45 through 46, Matthew 27, 45 through 46. And just like that. Jesus was dying on the cross. This Jesus who had performed, uh, I believe, it was 37 miracles that we know of. John says that if they would have written uh, everything that Jesus done, there wouldn't be enough books to fill what Jesus, uh, to tell the story of all that Jesus did in his three year. I think it was three and a half year ministry. They had saw um, water being turned to wine. They, they saw him magnify on two occasions, a small lunch to feed multitudes. They, his last miracle was raising Lazarus from the dead. They saw them all. They saw uh, him being transformed on the Mount of Transfiguration, where he, for a brief put, uh, for a brief time, put on uh, the body that he uh, would wear when he got to heaven. And I mean, they had saw all of these great miracles, spent time with him, uh, intimate time with him. John says he even laid on his side, it's intimate relationship, and, and just like that, Jesus is dying. <coughs> just like that, Jesus is dying. And I can't imagine, it just probably would have just blown my world apart. I probably would have lost my mind had I not been listening to Jesus. Hello, somebody. You see, uh, God usually, for these and just like that moments, God usually prepares you for these and just like moments, and just like that moments. And, and Jesus had told them specifically three times that he was going to have to go uh, and be, uh, suffer and die for the sins of the world. And he tried to prepare them, but they were not listening. And Jesus, even of himself, as we see on the cross, was not prepared to be separated 
from God, the Father, and God, the Son. So much so, he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And, and many times, if Jesus could be suffering and dying on the cross and feel forsaken, can you imagine how the disciples felt forsaken? Can you imagine how somebody today is struggling with a trial who, who has cancer and feels forsaken, who, who has been living holy and righteous and and it's a fear forsaken by God because they're struggling as long as they were living for the world. It seems like they could make a good living. But when they gave their life to Jesus Christ, they began to suffer. And, and, and many times in this life, you'll feel for us, like you're suffering, you feel forsaken. But I want you to know you better press on, saint, in Jesus' name. I tell men all the time in marriage, God says you should love your wife like, like Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. And I tell men all the time in marriage, you want your marriage to work, you've got to die. But I tell them, don't stay dead because you can rise again. And this is what Jesus would do in this moment. Even Jesus himself felt forsaken, but it wasn't over. It was just, he was like the disciples we talked about on Wednesday night in the middle of the storm, feeling forsaken because he was all God and all man. That man part of him was feeling forsaken. And, and I told you on yesterday to keep struggling if you're in the midst of the storm, trying to get home, to keep struggling. It's take you two or three times uh, longer to try to get there. Keep struggling, Jesus. Keep struggling on the cross. Um, because when you die, you're not going to say this. Somebody here at the sound of my voice needs to die. Ooh. Die to yourself. But like I said, don't stay dead in Jesus' name. And we all at time have felt for Can you imagine ooh, how the parents are feeling with the six kids? That's some stuff I just, I just, I just can't handle it. I fast and pray. But can you imagine? Can you imagine just in, in New Orleans, the, 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 the a tornado just struck. The man said, four hell Mar Marys and everything was gone. Can you imagine you could feel forsaken in these kind of moments? Can you imagine a Christian person in Ukraine and their houses and homes have been destroyed and don't have anywhere to stay? Can you imagine in this life? And this is why Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. Um, after he died for our sins to save a place for us, he went to heaven to prepare a place for us because he know we can't live in a world like this. The whole time, why would you? Why would you want to live in a world where six baby girls can die in a car? Why would you live in a world where weather is, destroys your life and men destroy your life? Tell you the truth, at times you will feel forsaken. I'm here to tell you, keep struggling. Keep struggling because you're in the will of God. Jesus was smack dab in the will of God. His purpose for being born, he was born to die. But even though he knew it mentally, he was smack dab in the will of God. Can you say after the tornado, you're smack dab in the will of God? I remember and and and. and here in Oklahoma, then uh, when that big storm came through Norman that night, and I I ran across a picture of a person come out coming out of their storm shelter, the tornado shelter, and, and 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 they came out and uh panned their whole property and everything was gone. And he said. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of 
the Lord. Now that's Christian maturity where you can experience the most devastating time of your life and know that God gave it and God took it away. Woo! That's true Christian maturity because in this life, you're going to lose something and somebody. You might lose everybody the longer you live. That's why I don't want to live a long life. My, my life is in the hands of God. But I've noticed, like with my grandmother, when she was the last of her generation, everybody had died because she lived so long. But whether you live long or short, I say, keep believing. Keep hoping. Don't give up. Even in times where you feel forsaken, Eli, Eli, Nama, Nabak, Tanu. We know the word of God says that he'll never leave us or forsake us. Sometimes we feel it when the comforts of this life is taken away. But I've had a lot and I've had stuff taken away and all I know is that I just continue to to serve God instinctively. It wasn't even much of a choice. I just instinctively served him and stuff and people come and go, but God is forever and he can enable you to get through in just like that moments in life. Come back Sunday if you're able uh, to hear and to finish uh, this a message for Sunday. We want to see you, uh, Bethlehem, uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, but let me say a special prayer for these situations, even as we fast and pray tomorrow. Father God, we come right now. Move, Lord, for the families in Tishomingo, oh Lord. Uh, just an utter devastation. And Father God, we don't know what to say or what to do in situations at times like this. All I know to do, Lord, is to call on you, Father, in Jesus' name, because the families, the six families are going to need you like they've never needed you before. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that you would comfort and that you would show your care in the midst of all this heartache and pain and suffering. Father, we pray, Lord, that you manifest in Jesus name the power of your Holy Spirit in Jesus name to comfort a people in a time such as this down in Chisamingo Father in Jesus name we pray Lord for those in New Orleans who have lost houses and homes and jobs Lord we see the devil's paw print in Chisamingo we see the devil's paw print in New Orleans but we call on the name of the Lord in Jesus name Father that you would move in ways that we cannot understand or cannot imagine provide for these people Father in Jesus name Lord we lift up uh, Ukraine to your Father and pray that you will continue to rebuke uh, the forces of all oh, of Russia in Jesus name that you will continue to rebuke Father because we see the devil's prophet their father and we believe in calling a God that can speak to the nation's father oh dispatch oh those fiery oh chariots that Elijah said that you open the eyes that there he may see dispatch oh to Ukraine father in Jesus name and that somehow by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will manifest your healing power Oh, to rebuild her. Oh, Ukraine, Father, to deliver them, Father, right now. In Jesus' name, and we lift up her. Oh, 
Oh, Brittany, to your father. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, that we heard from her for the first time in about a month and a half. Father, we pray, Lord, that not that we hear from, that we that she be delivered, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, along with Paul, Father, in Jesus' name. Uh, along with that other brother, Father, in Jesus' name. Travis, uh, in Jesus' name, Father, we believe by faith that we call on a God that's able to deliver and move and make ways, Father. And Jesus, somebody's listening at the sound of my voice. And they need you right now, Father. And I intercede on their behalf. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would reach them, Father, where they are to put down the, the guns or the flush, the pills. The devil wants them to take their life, Father. I see the devil's paw print in their life. But we believe, Father, in Jesus' name. You called us to be salt, which preserves, and we want to preserve our nation and preserve our world. And, and you've called us to be light, and we want to be the light of hope. Father, we pray that your light of hope will emanate from this place to those who are listening at the sound of my voice. Father, in Jesus' name, we call on you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Jesus name we believe by faith that you're healing that you're moving that you're setting free that you're comforting father right now in Jesus name amen and praise the Lord Bethlehem and saints of God and again I'm encouraging you to fast and pray tomorrow cry out to the Lord like you've never cried out before on those initiatives that we just prayed. I just prayed about pray tomorrow. Um, this world needs your salt. This world needs your light. And, and, and you need to manifest that through the power of prayer and God moving in mighty and awesome ways across our world when the devil has, 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 has set his paw print in our world. It's our job to trace that old devil and to rebuke him from the places that he's been in Jesus' name. Bethlehem, you know, I always like to say at the end of these moments to stay connected. Stay connected to God's person. Stay connected to God's precepts. You stay connected to God's person through prayer. You stay connected to uh, God's precept through the skills that, that we taught you last month. And stay connected to God's people. Don't you know we help each other? We hope each other. Hello, somebody. That's what we do. And that's why we want to see you this coming. Sunday at the 11 o'clock service for our first time visitors. Come on out at 11. We want to see the disciples in Sunday school, whether in the, in the service or uh, in the sanctuary or on Zoom. We want to see you. We want you to stay connected. I want to thank you for listening uh, to Heads Up for the Weekend. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer.